One thing we did for fun was go to drive-in movies. Drive-in movies were very um, popular in the 1960s, but they were also kind of like controversial for teenagers. Drive-in movies were where people went to make out and watch the movie on a big projector. I don't understand why anyone wanted to go to a drive-in movie because it'd probably be like freezing cold outside. But yeah, you could always like bring your own like food. There were usually ads before the movie, I think. They were really weird. You were talking to the camera and the camera talked back. I remember there was this one advertisement where this woman like had like pizza rolls at her house and everyone's like, hey can't you could not possibly made these. She's like, I didn't have to. Hippies were people that rebelled against their parents and they rebelled by doing drugs because that's the smart choice. I mean, I guess you kind of associate them with like the peace sign. But it's really all the same about hippies is pot and the peace sign. They smoked a lot of weird things. Think drugs? You think long, you know, free hair that's just like blowing in the wind. And they have long hair and they just did things that their parents wouldn't like. You think like those like Janis Joplin sunglasses? They were anti-war. They didn't like the war. Aside from the drugs, I'm sure they were great people. It's horrible. Suddenly you're afraid and you don't know what you're afraid of. Did you ever get that feeling? Sure. But when I get it, the only thing that does any good is to jump into a cab and go to Tiffany's. It calms me down right away. The quietness and the proud look of it. Nothing very bad could happen to you there. If I could find a real life place that made me feel like Tiffany's, then, then I'd buy some furniture and give the cat a name. Breakfast at Tiffany's was um, one of the most popular movies of the 1960s and probably Audrey Hepburn's most popular movie. Breakfast at Tiffany's was a huge success. It was different than a lot of the other movies that were out at the time. It was more like a soap opera, which is what really caught people's attention because that wasn't used before this. There was always excitement and new drama that would catch their attention again. Audrey Hepburn was the star of this movie. It's a universal image of her in a black dress with the long, you know, cigarette holder and uh, the diamonds in her hair. Nothing so risky had been attempted before this movie. On kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Julie Andrews made a pretty big um, impact in the 1960s with her. Um, musical career in The Sound of Music, which was about a nanny who comes in and helps these kids. Uh, Maria always wanted to be a nun, and she tried that lifestyle, but she really didn't like it as much as she thought she would. The Sound of Music was about a girl who tried to become a nun, but failed. She left and took a job taking care of a bunch of children. There were seven kids, and they all seemed really unhappy with their life at home. She went and became a nanny. She taught the children how to sing, which made them happy because they were sad. She brought music into their life. Tea, apple, gin, and bread, and that brings us back to don't tea, la tea, do Of course, she ended up marrying the husband like all nanny shows. It was an awesome movie. <laughs> Bewitched was a popular TV show that a lot of people like to watch. It was about this girl who marries a businessman and the businessman didn't know that she was a witch until their honeymoon. Her husband was all like, I love you, and he didn't know that she was a witch. And she was all like, well darn, he doesn't know I'm a witch, so now I can't be an actual witch. She would still use her magic 
for her and her husband's good. She ends up using like her powers to, you know, conveniently save the day and help out her and her husband. Conveniently. The Brady Bunch was a TV show started in the late 60s. It was a show about family life and it talked about common everyday problems that any families could have. The Brady Bunch was like seriously like an iconic show it because it kind of showed like the like the perfect family I think. So Leave It to Beaver was a very popular TV show in the 1960s about the shenanigans of a boy in you know suburban America. It was about an all-American happy middle-class 1950s family. You know he would just do other stupid stuff like Stuff that we're like, what's the big deal? We've done that all of our lives and we haven't gotten in trouble for it. The episode would always end with a lesson and a happy scene from the whole family. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. I need a place to hide away. Four British guys. Beatles were four little British boys. They're four British guys who sang songs <laughs> with the you know cool long hair. And they did the whole Abbey Road thing that's like gone down in infamy. I'm pretty sure everyone in the whole freaking world knows what color the submarine is. There was <laughs> one named John and one named Paul. I think. <laughs> um, there was like Ringo Starr and. John Lennon. There's one that had like two names. I don't know their names. <laughs> um, Paul McCartney. And here comes sun. You know that one. All this was really popular in the 1950s and 60s and. Standing in my boots, sweet shoes. He was really popular with his music, you know, like something about a hound dog. Good night, everybody! Elvis's music was controversial because parents weren't really into it because it was different than what they were used to, so they didn't really want their kids listening to it. They liked Elvis because he sounded cool and he had some pretty nice hips. All the girls wanted him. No, but like, you know, his like white bell bottoms and those peanut butter and something sandwiches. It's awesome, like everything he did. Marilyn Monroe mostly was popular in the 50s because she did a bunch of movies. Her picture in a new calendar was what really made her first famous. You know, she's most infamous for the white dress scene. They, oh my god, my dress accidentally flew up. That's not make cinematic history with that. She was like the 1960 version of Miley Cyrus. Everything she did was scandalous. She was a big sex symbol because not a lot of people were as scandalous as she was. She had a thing with the president's brother. People thought she had a thing with the president. She said, happy birthday, Mr. President. She didn't help because she just sang happy birthday to him in a very <laughs> suggesting way. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. She died on August 5th of 1962 because she killed herself. She died on 36 when they found her dead in her bed, naked, overdosed on pills.
It was a pretty upsetting experience for people. It was a really big deal when she died because a lot of people were fans of hers. Her ex-husband had a really hard time with it. Her ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio, was really upset because after she divorced her last husband, he they kind of had a thing. And so he was really upset. He was in charge of her funeral arrangements. For 20 years after her death, he sent six red roses to her grave site three times a week. His supposed last words were something to the effect of, I'll finally get to see Marilyn. She was the sex symbol of the 1950s and 60s, and she's a sex symbol now. JFK, he was the president, and his wife was Jackie Kennedy. So JFK and Jackie Kennedy were like the power couple of the 1960s. JFK was obviously known for being president, and he came from like a really big political family. He, you know, handled the Bay of Pigs crisis and everything, you know, in between up until his assassination in November of 1963. November 22nd, 1963. Um, it was a shocking experience and no one really saw it coming. Jackie Kennedy was sitting right next to him when he got shot and she was pretty upset over it. It was a sad day for everyone. There's lots of speculations about his assassination including like there was one conspiracy theory that Mickey Mouse did it. I don't like Mickey Mouse but who would blame it on Mickey Mouse? At his funeral there is a well-known picture of his son saluting him. And Jackie Kennedy on her own could have ruled the world. She was like basically like Tyra Banks in the 1960s. She remarried after JFK got shot. She jet-setted around the world while she took care of her two kids, John John and Caroline, and she made it look all easy and she looked great while she was doing it. She had the big hair and the nice suits and the really pretty dresses and the great welcoming smile. Uh, July 16th, 1969 was the day that man first landed on the moon. Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. So it was Neil Armstrong. It was Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and some other guy. One small step for man, one large step for mankind. It was one small step for man, one big step for mankind. And this is my small step man and one giant leap for mankind. A lot of people watched it live on TV because it was a very big deal. The accomplishment gave Americans a sense of pride. It was a big deal for the U.S. to go out on the moon because they had that whole thing with Russia and they were all angry at each other and they were trying to get to the moon first. We stuck the American flag like in the moon and there's the you know really iconic picture of him in his spacesuit on the moon, it was a huge deal, you know? We had won. This was the end of the nuclear war.